Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present and also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment I will introduce you to my wonderful guest Caroline Carey but before that I would like to say thank you for watching this show as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Caroline Carey, who will be imparting her wisdom about soul retrieval for the ambitious woman. Caroline, through Middle Earth Medicine, helps us find our soul purpose and bring it back into ourselves so we can bring forward our creativity. She is very much in touch with Mother Earth and through dancing, spirituality and poetry, is able to guide you in soul retrieval. She was recently seen on The Time of the Sixth Son, the movie, where she shared her wisdom about Gaia and unity. Caroline runs workshops and gatherings, including dance, movement, creativity, shamanic medicine skills, and film work studying Middle Earth and the ancestral and historical lineage of our European landscapes, either by herself or with her husband, Ben Cole. She has a wonderful down-to-earth presence about her and is really grounded here on Earth and helps us feel present, grounded and calm in our lives. So without further delay, hello, Caroline, and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, Ray. It's lovely to be here, lovely to connect with you. And yeah, I'm really good. I've had a really, really inspiring, wonderful day. It's been sunny, it's been beautiful, and I've... um, yeah, with my husband and with my mother-in-law, we've been very, very creative. So um, it's, it's been a very productive day. <laughs> ah, brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then whether you're watching live or the recording, please hit the like or love button, as I love it when hearts and thumbs appear across the screen. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all the recordings. Now, you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Caroline and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live once the show is finished. So, Caroline, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then about soul retrieval for the ambitious woman? Okay, well, yeah, I'm Caroline. Um, I'm, you know, you you say I'm very grounded on this earth and I think one of the main reasons for that is that I'm a mom and I'm a granny and uh, you know I I have a a big family and I've always said that that's the thing that really keeps me here keeps my feet on the ground keeps me practical um, and keeps me very creative as well so I I spent I've spent most of my well all my adult life really being a mom and having to find inventive ways to to, to live in my family life, you know, that's been created. So, um, but I've also loved to dance. And I think dance is so important for keeping us in connection with the body, uh, with the heart, with the mind, and a beautiful connection with spirit and all things and the soul. And so that's what the way that I tap into my creativity largely is through dance. And to me, that is the body at its most creative without anything else at all you know it's just it's just the body in movement is creative so um yeah i I, um i i created this body of work called middle earth medicine and and that was really about helping people who are creative but maybe for some have lost a sense of their creativity um or need to find a way to get their creativity a little bit more out into the world in a very grounded way and in connection with others and through dance through creative tools that's what we do and what I find is that the the, the soul the soul retrieval I learn and passion about 
since I was a child, actually, I always had this innate understanding that we were here for a purpose, that there was something here that we were meant to be doing, and we had to find that, and it was our job to find that. And um, and as time has gone on, I've I've watched the what I call the golden thread through my own life and very very particular experiences. Um, I've I've watched that and seen that there are very specific stages in my life where where spirit has really connected with me. And I use the word spirit. I sometimes use the word God, whatever that means to anybody, yeah. an individual thing, um, and and has shown me. The parts of my journey that really matter and that I'm here to learn from and then to share with others as as my own particular offering for me that is soul retrieval it's about bringing the soul back home into the body into the heart and to really connect with that on that that soul level in connection with the ground that we walk upon in connection with the earth and and everything else that's going on around us and and being able to bring our own medicine what is ours? What is mine to do in the world? To really bring that into fruition. And I use the the, the phrase, you know, the, the ambitious woman. Um, I work mostly with women. I do work with men as well. Love men. This is not just about women necessarily, but you'd ask no. about the feminine, about yeah. women. So there you yeah. go. Um, yeah, I work, so I work with men as well about this show, you know. Exactly. Women. exactly, exactly. But it's an interesting thing for me around women and you know that ambitious side of us that part of us that really wants to step more fully into our medicine or into our offering or into our creativity but somewhere in society or somewhere in our own ancestral lineage or wherever it's really happened I noticed this tendency for women to to try and adopt a more masculine energy or more masculine yeah. archetypal quality in order to do that you know, the ambition is quite a masculine thing. So I wouldn't mm. necessarily use the word ambition that much, but I think it's a kind of word that people understand. Um, and, and what I would talk about more is about being in service. But being in service does need an element of ambition to begin with. We get to start to see our calling. We get to see what we're here to do. And, and that drives the ambition. But it's very easy, I think, for women particularly to to kind of lose a sense of their femininity at that time. Do you know, to feel we have to be mm. different. We have to, you know, dress it up and get into yeah. the natural world and that kind of thing. And 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 I'm, you know, I feel very passionate about the feminine and the feminine qualities that we all hold. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the the, the feminine being having that ambitiousness. And wanting to make their offering to the world, wanting to bring their soul a little bit more in line, um, actually with the ego. And I often yeah. talk about the soul and the ego falling in love, bringing the two together, because the ego without soul is all about, um, you know, self gratification, um, power, games. You know, it, it, it's it's mm. a little lost in the world of spirit and soul. In if we're all soul. Um, and and no ego, so the soul doesn't have the hands of the ego to to manifest and to create on this earth. Then that can get very lost, spaced out in another world, not fully grounded and in the body. So when we bring the two together, and there is a balance between the two, then then the soul is really supported and and served by the ego and 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 the human condition here on this planet. And, you know, it's about bringing all of that into alignment. And, and I think that's the place for the feminine, for the feminine wisdom, the grandmother wisdom, for the, you know, the, 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 for women to really become um, connected to in a way that serves the feminine nature of our times and what's really needed by women to step up and have a voice, to really mm. have a voice in the world. Yeah, and it's something yeah. that's been lacking, you know, in, in over the past century, you mm. know, we, we all, yeah. we're all aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. But I, th I, th I think that's kind of like kind of like changing quite a lot now and uh, a lot mm. more women are, st are stepping up. Um, but it is a case of, yeah, as, as you say, stepping up with your feminine side, not trying to emulate uh, um, men at all, uh, you mm. know, 
but, but just so that by by stepping up with our feminine side we create the equal balance absolutely absolutely and and I, I feel very passionate about that and I suppose it's come through my own journey um, of, of being the feminine that I am being the woman that I am and you know I, I, I as I was growing up I had a, an older brother and we were very close together there was only 18 months between us and and one of my particular stories is that my my, my brother came home from school one day and uh, well on his very very first day and he showed my mother that he had written his name and her reaction to that bless her you know she did, she was doing her best as mother was to go oh i could have i could have taught him that before he went to school and, and wouldn't i have been the great mother who you know who had yeah. my son to read and write and he could have done all these things before he went so there's me age three and a half pencil in hand from then on from that moment on and, uh, and books and all the rest of it and my mother insisting that I was like my brother and could write well before I went to school and she absolutely insisted on that and so I was taught to read and write from a very very early age and the message mm. I got from that was you've got to be like your big brother you've yes. got to be like and so the message I was always getting was to be like the masculine, be, you know, follow that, that pattern, follow that energy, follow that quality. And, and I was driven by that for a very long time, you know, and, and it took away from me the, 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 yeah, what I really needed to address mm. my, my feminine role in, in the world and to really honor that. So there was a real mixed message for me going on as I grew up. And, and I think you know, it's taken me a lifetime to really turn it around, to really get the qualities that I have, of course, being a mother and a grandmother and all those things mm. really, really nurture that and really help to bring that into to being. But not only that, lots of things, lots of yeah. connection to nature, to, to the, 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 the feminine, the yin qualities of nature, um, you know, all sorts of things have helped me to develop a stronger understanding of that and to really honor that and to love that and not to feel I've got to be different in any way in order to really show myself to the world. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's really good. And if you just joined us live, then please do say hello so we can say say hello, hello back to you. Um, so Caroline, when, when did you kind of like realize that you you needed to bring more feminine in, in into your life was it as a child or when you were older when you started dancing I think the dance really helped although I, I always went to ballet classes but I felt a bit frumpy in ballet classes I mean I I, I went to ballet from the age three to um, 15 and then for a while you know after I'd had a few children and you know I sort of I loved the ballet because it gave me this wonderful structure and um you know, and, and, and when I was little, it was the only thing that my mother thought of to send me to. She knew I loved dancing. She said, right, you go to ballet classes because that's what we all do. So I toddled off with her to ballet classes and crammed my big feet into little pink ballet shoes. And, um, you know, and I but I passed all my exams. I had that that sort of energy in the mm. dance. I was very, very alive. I was always very alive in the dance. Um, I wanted to do it my own way, did not want to necessarily get the steps right, but I would do it because I had a, a sense of discipline. Um, so that, you know, that was a very feminine practice, but it was also, you know, th there was a sort of almost like a yang energy to, to ballet. There mm. is a yang energy to ballet. Um, and, and I think, you know, but for me that, you know, I was, I was playing music when I was very little. We had a little tiny uh, record player that I kept in my bedroom. And I put the little 45 RPM records on it. And I had about five, I think. And I would put them on and, and play over and over and over again, these same, same songs, same bits of music, you know, and, and thoroughly, you know, just immersed myself into the dance um, constantly. And that was my passion. That's what I loved. And, you know, it was, it was a, a, a feminine quality that I was finding at that time always. And, but as, as it went on, you know, as life went on, it was they just kept bringing me back to the true essence of myself. Uh, but I think my writing, my poetry, um, it's not just the dance. It's 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 the creativity that I've chosen that to me is is actually very feminine. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, because you kind of like, because because with writing, you kind of like think that is kind of like masculine and feminine at the same time because you get good male writers and you get good mm. female writers and mm. what you're writing doesn't necessarily have to mean you're more masculine or feminine um, than, than the other, you know, even, you know, um, people like Jane Austen when she had to publish under um, a male name initially and that. Yeah. There, was, there was still that feminine energy with, with her work. Mm, mm, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and there's many women back in our lineages in history that have had to do similar because it wasn't allowed. And it's, it's almost like there's a residue of that sometimes. You know, we think back to the burning of the witches. Mm. All of, you know, there is a, there's almost a fear in us as women to really step out, or not just in women, but e even in the, the feminine qualities within men. It's like mm. damp that down, keep keep our voices, keep you know, keep it quiet. You know, don't don't really share yourself as much as you would like to. Um, and I, yeah, that, that I think that that's still there. I think there is still a quality of that within mm. us, a shyness or yeah, just a fear of our medicine. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You you kind of mentioned uh, medicine medicine a lot. Um, so yeah. it's that kind of like our soul, our, our energy, um, our he healing. I think medicine, it's, it's like what I have had to go through in my life in order to create something for others. So my medicine that, that I have administered for myself and my own healing path is then uh, something that is a, it can be if they want to take it, <laughs> is what I'm offering to other people. Say, so, okay, this is what I did in order to heal aspects of my life. It might work for you as well. It might, I'm not saying it will, but it no. might. It might be useful to you. So I'm then offering that out. And if people find that useful, then they start to create their medicine from their experiences. So what, what was my medicine? might initiate somebody else's medicine to heal their journey and then they go on to find what is theirs it's the same question what is mine to do and then i suppose they can also when when they find theirs they can then go on and you know it's like a ripple it's like that ripple effect they then affect the next person they're involved exactly. with that person and affects sure sure absolutely and, you know, when it's all about soul retrieval, it's all about bringing those aspects of ourselves back in, in, a, in a more um, wholesome way. And if you think about the, the wounded healer, and so shamanically, mm. we're often working with the wounded healer archetype. And it's that part of us that has been wounded, that hurts, um, that has been neglected, or there is trauma there. And in the shamanic world, you know, we're always looking to, find the lost parts of the soul that have left because of that trauma or neglect. And so when we can call those parts back in, then you know we start to recognize the trauma or the neglect that was created at that time. And we start to create a healing um, energy that stays with us, that then stays with us um, and enables us to see the harm that was done but also enables us to heal from it and to possibly find different actions or you know different ways of living in the world that that help us on that healing path. Mm. So we're not stuck. Yeah. We're not stuck in the place of the victim to our stories. You know that needs to change. We can't. We can't change what happened to us. You know that that happened. That's totally clear. You know can't go back into the past and wipe the slate clean mm. those happened but what i can do is begin to address them and then when the time is right for the soul to be able to come home to us and we can start to fulfill our lives a little bit more fully then that space opens up and for us to receive the healing that is needed and it'll never happen it never actually happen until the time is right until we have the right resources to be able to embody that. And it, because it, it might come at a time where, you know, we, 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 we remember, we start to remember the, the, the journey that we've had. We start to remember the trauma or the neglect or whatever's been going on in the past that we were victim to. 
and we might have to feel some of the emotions and the challenges around that you know that there was a time where if we were traumatized by something we would shut down and we wouldn't be able to express the emotions that were felt at that time. You know, they just, it just wouldn't happen. So we go into some part of story or some, some negative pattern or habit in our life that keeps that from being fully expressed. And then, you know, it, it's that time then later in life where we are supported where we have got the support and the resource that we need to address that story we can then allow that soul part to return home that fulfillment of self where you know we we may have to then experience some of the emotion some of what was needed at that time to be expressed and and that can be a difficult thing that can be challenging but it's 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 worth it it's like worth going through that in order to um, unhook yourself from the victim story. Oh, there's somebody yeah. saying. Yes, Corinda Singh is saying hello. Hi, yeah. Caroline. Hi. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for, um, for for tuning in and watching. If you've got any questions or anything, um, then then please. In fact, Corinda has actually said, "I agree." I agree. So, yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's lovely. With, with, with what you've been saying so do you think that um from you from your experience and from your own journey and from other people's journeys that that, that, that you've been, that you you've assisted with do you think that sometimes the bits of our soul that go go missing happened in previous lifetimes or is it just in this lifetime i i tend to work in this lifetime I know there are people, practitioners who work with past lives. Um, I tend to really focus on this lifetime, you know, where 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 we've got the where we've got the facts, where we've got we know what's happened, um, we've got a good sense of that. And it, you know, I'm, I'm for me, I'm living here at this time. This is this is when I'm, you know, the life that I'm living, and I need to fulfil this life as much as I possibly can right now. Um, I don't. I, sometimes past life stuff does come into workshop, mm. or journeying, or healing, that kind of thing. But um, you know, my main focus is this life. This is the life we're in right now. Yeah. And and do, you know? Do you find that sometimes people don't know um, initially what the reason was in the first place, and it's only when they sort of like start working, they go, "Oh yeah, I still remember that now." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely we shut down a lot of memory memory does get shut down sometimes it gets very distorted as well and it's hard to really get in touch with the facts with the data and um, we have to be very careful of that but you know I, I I trust the memory I trust the memory that comes through when I when I move when I dance I trust it when um do you know when I'm being creative something starts to happen and you get this visceral feeling around it and you know what's the truth you know what what's going on there and sometimes we're shown things through creativity or through the dance you know my, my memories of, of of abuse from a child that I had shut away didn't appear for me until it, I was 30 and I was really ready then to remember I was ready to get a sense of it and to start working with it I felt safe enough to I had a practice <laughs> at that point and I had people around me that could support me in it and that's what I really needed and I think a lot of these memories don't come until we are in a in a place where we feel safe enough to do that and that's when the soul does start to to be able to be called back yeah. in because we are held in safety at that time and um and I think you know in order for us to really step out and again this is why I use the word ambition or to be in service is that we do need to we need to fulfill our soul's contract we need to call all those parts of ourselves back and fulfill ourselves on a, on a spiritual level as well as an emotional and and mental level mm. so that we are we are we, we, we're connected through body heart mind and soul and spirit we're in in, in alignment with everything you know everything is functioning together there's no separation between yeah. 
Yeah, and then it's a case of remembering of, of remembering that, which is quite often what what we don't do, and that through everything that goes on in our life, and when we kind of like do separate them without yeah. suddenly thinking actually they should all be here in the present, you know, all connected yeah. to each other. Yeah, yeah, and I think if we don't remember things, and we're still, we it's almost like having a, a backseat driver. There's some part of us that is running the show some some old wounded part of us running the show and and really enabling us to keep living a, a dysfunctional life or to keep creating the same story over and over again or to you know it, it's like choosing the, the the wrong relationship or not the relationships are ever really wrong but finding mm. ourselves getting into the same old patterns that haven't served us before and somehow we keep doing it, we keep doing it. Partly because something needs to wake up in us. Something needs to wake up and say, hey, you know, there's there's something missing here, something you need to really connect to. And you know, the soul is knocking on the door. And and yeah, we've got to we need to remember some of that stuff so we can change it. We can't change it if we don't remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Corinda, I will be posting those details um, towards the end of the show, so, 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 so don't worry about, about that. They will, they will, they will be there. Um, so, with 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 dance, so, so do you think dance can really help people sort of like connect back to themselves and to and to earth? I mean, do they need to be good dancers, or is it just letting yourself go? It's movement. It's movement of the body, quite often to music, to the drum beats, um, just with that, with, in silence. We're all dancers. We, we can all dance. Even if you say, I've got three left feet or whatever, you know, I know you can still dance. You know, it, and, you know, I, I just, I think, yeah, the dance does bring us back to ourselves. It brings us back, like I said before, like to the body, to the heart, to the mind. Um, you know, it helps us to align our whole being. To me, it is soul retrieval in movement. You know, that I I do believe for a lot of people that, you know, working with soul retrieval by yourself in your own way is a lot more empowering than getting somebody else to do it for you. And that's not to knock people who do do that. And I would have worked with people in that way myself with soul retrieval. Um, but I do encourage people to get onto the dance floor, to enter into the ecstatic dance. And ecstatic is the inclusion of everything, the inclusion of body, emotions. Um, you, everything is welcome on the dance floor. And we move with that. So you don't leave anything out. And, you know, it, it, it's, it, it is bringing yourself home, bringing yourself home to the body and awakening the dancer inside you and and externally internally and it's connecting you to that wider um consciousness that we all have the ability to tap into so we become one with everything we become yeah. one with the dance we become with uh, the circle of energy around us with the atmosphere around us and the atmosphere that we are creating through our dance we're also one with with the group that we're dancing with if we're in a in a dancing tribe for example you know we become one together it becomes one dance you know everybody's moving with the same rhythm to that particular piece of music and 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 you know there really is this deep deep connection this unity of moving bodies <clears throat> and then in connection with the wider circle and the the world to the universal energy to everything and it's a very, very powerful place when we all get dancing together and moving together and um, breathing together. Do you know, it's very ecstatic. And ecstatic means whole. Ecstatic means everything. Ecstatic means body, breath, emotion, whatever the emotion is. It means fully connected to the mind, not in the mind that is thinking about the past or thinking about mm. the future. It's the mind that is totally present and knows exactly what's happening with the dancer and what's happening in the vicinity just around us. So it's it's powerful. Um, and, you know, often we talk about ec ecstatic dance or ecstasy as <clears throat> getting out of the body. It's not. It's about getting into the body. Mm. It really is about coming home to yourself, getting to know who you are. 
and I've had years and years all my life on on the ecstatic dance floor and I'm very passionate about it and the, the lovely thing about it is it's for everybody it's not about getting steps right it's not about having to look a certain way it's about moving your body to the beat to the rhythm to movement in whatever way you want to do it even if it's just tapping your feet on the floor or you know playing with your fingers or whatever it yeah. is that's that's the yeah that's the connection to the ecstasy of life you know the pleasure and the pain all in one dance you can tell i'm really passionate about it <laughs> <laughs> no no that that's that's absolutely fine you know and i you know i i you know i'm not a professional dancer but i've always loved you know i've always loved dancing i can remember when i was my younger days when i used to go clubbing and uh, um and i and it's and <laughs> my mum's not watching this but even if she was it well, she might be hi mum if you aren't watching um but you know some of the clubs i went to um you know other people around me friends would get offered drugs in the toilets but i was never ever ever offered drugs at all because when i was on the dance floor i literally or when i am on the dance floor even now i'm just in my own world completely i have no idea what's going on around me because i'm just in, in me in in the present um so so yeah that probably probably saved me quite a bit actually <laughs> and i i was exactly the same you know i wanted to be on the dance floor and and you know a, a, a chemical thing happens to us when we dance you know we, we tap into the serotonin for one thing it, you know in in our in our brain it mm. starts to change things it frees us up um we, we're hearing things about dance now that we didn't know before um, on a scientific level. So people with, with all kinds of um, uh, Parkinson's disease, for one thing, um, Alzheimer's, um, all kinds of, you know, absolutely all kinds of, um, you know, illnesses are being treated now mm. through movement, through yoga, through dance, through rhythm, through the drum. Um, the drum beat, the shamanic drum beat is used in, for, with doctors. Uh, mm. to help people to meditate, to calm them, to to really be able to visualize a little bit more clearly. We tap into the pineal gland, into our mind's eye. And, you know, the imagination is a beautiful portal to the spirit world to enable it to us to see a little bit more clearly, to bring the imagination alive. And that's so important for us, as, as you know yourself, mm. with, with the work that you do. We need to use the imagination to tap into it, yeah. to be so much more creative. I've just been working with my mother-in-law. She's 87. She's an incredible artist, Brenda May. I hope she's out there watching this. But she has just Hi. helped us to design, um, you know, 52 medicine cards for Middle Earth medicine. Wow. They are stunning. They are gorgeous. And without her incredible imagination, you know, and, and her ability to tap into what I'm talking about, for one thing, um, and this body of work that is Middle Earth medicine, um, you know, that, yeah, it, it, it's like we're just seeing this glorious tapestry of creativity that is, you know, it, it's, and that's going to be going out there to share with so many other people. So, you know, the imagination is just a, an incredibly powerful tool to bring, you know, our offering, our medicine into the world with. You know, that's where it begins. Mm. You know, the first, one of the first cards on the, um, in the medicine card pack is about the dreamer and the ability to dream in something new, some part of ourselves that really needs to be here, some part of our voice that needs to sing its song, some, some piece of poetry that's just waiting to be spoken off, the, off our lips. You know, it, it, yeah. it's like that's where it begins in that dreaming state and then it can start to manifest through our innocence, through our creativity, through our imagination, and be here, literally be here in physical form. Where does it all begin, you know? Yeah. Those cards sound like they're gonna be absolutely wonderful. Absolutely, yeah. I'm so excited about them. <laughs> yeah, you can you can feel the energy coming off you. It's like, yes, these are going to, yeah. Yeah, you know, they're going to be going way, way, way out. Absolutely. Um, well, we've got, um, Karen here, who says, so love dancing as a movement, and great to catch you live, Caroline. Great, yes, yeah, absolutely. Movement and dance is definitely medicine, and that's what we need to be working with. It, it, it's so important, I think, in our times, and, and so being recognised as well, that movement is medicine, 
and you know it's 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 part of our creative journey now is to really use that and not to feel it has to be a particular form of dance great if it is nothing wrong with that you know it's like yeah. whatever dance works for you but getting yourself onto the dance floor wherever it is i think is is just yeah so important even if it's in your living room yeah. you know close the curtains i used to do this when you know as a young mom my my little ones were in bed close the curtains shut the doors they're all asleep great put my favorite david bowie music on or whatever it was and and you know just dance just get lost in the dance mm -hmm. and you know check in with the body and just the pleasure of that is so wonderful so yeah i i I still, I still do it, you know, every now and again, if I'm kind of like feeling stuck or, you, you know, nothing's right. It's like, OK, um, I, I put on some, some pagan music, sort of like, funny enough, around the uh, wheel within the circle. It's what I tend, it's what I tend to do. I just lose myself in, you yeah. know, in, in, in that until it's kind of like, ah, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, music is is absolute medicine for the soul. It's beautiful. And you know, that all those incredible musicians who are out there, you know, mm. sharing their gifts. And and this is one of the things, you know, we often hear about the poor musician. You know, a few make it and then, and then they do really well in the world and everybody's listening to their music. But there are uh, millions of musicians out there Absolutely. And putting their work out there and, you know, and I say to people, please, please pay for your music. You know, mm. don't get it for nothing off other people or, or off on, online or something. Please, please pay for your music. Support the artists. Support the musicians. You know, anything like that. It's, it's mm. like, I think, and this is where Middle Earth Medicine is has its, um, you know, is it, where we're just really passionate about that in that, about supporting artists. and say, you know, give them value. You know, really mm. value those people who are creating things. And, and that's what we want to do is to really help support. It's what the cards are all about support the creative people in the world to really shine because we need them you know we yeah. really need that creativity we need that kind of inspiration and you know it, it we don't need to put academia on the top shelf and and leave the 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 artists you know as if oh well that's secondary it's like yeah. let's bring that to the fore let's bring that much more fully into our colleges into our schools you know it's it's where children really shine when their imagination mm really given that permission to be here and not told that's just your imagination that's not yes. real because that's damaging to the innocent oh, yeah m most definitely you know you know especially with all um your, yeah, it's just your imaginary friend don't take any notice you know yeah. and, and a lot of children now you know they're having to go to school really early and start doing um uh, you know tests and stuff like that i, I you know i remember and I was sort of like um, infants and into juniors. And, uh, you know, we had playtime. You know, we got to draw, yeah. we got to read, we got to play with sand, et cetera. And they, children don't really get a chance to do that now. It, it's, it's a problem. It, it's definitely a problem. I see it as a problem. I mean, I have six children. For the majority of their upbringing, they decided whether they went to school or not. Mm. And, you know, they, they ended up, you know, they all had some time in school. and sometime where they weren't in school, um, but they made that choice. And, you know, the important thing for me was um, was to watch them and to see what they were most curious about and most into as little children. You know, what did they love most? And to really encourage that in them. That was the important thing was that, you know, I, I, I would see that, you know, one of them was just so into being on the water, skating, surfing, whatever it was, he wanted to be on water, you know, and, and the important thing was to really support that and say, OK, yeah, I see that's what's most important to you. Not the academia, but. Oh, have we? No, we're still there. Gone a bit black. I'm not sure if I'll keep talking for now. No, no, no you're, um, you're, you're, you're still live. And, as far as I can see. and now in his life now, he is he is still doing that. He is still working um, with other children, teaching them about surfing, teaching them about outdoor pursuits, um, you know, working in that field, boating and all the rest of it. And that's what um, he has followed his passion all the way through yeah. life. 
Yeah. And it's, Ray has disappeared. I don't know if I've disappeared as no, well. No, no, can no. Can you, can, can you um, still hear me? see what's happening here. So, Caroline, Caroline, can you still hear me? Can you still hear me, Caroline? Not sure what's going on. Okay. Um, we have. Um, I can still see Caroline. Um, and I can still hear her, although she has now just, we have now just lost her. Hopefully she'll, uh, she managed to get herself back and that, which hopefully she's doing now. Are you back? Ah, did I Aha. disappear? Did I disappear? <laughs> you did, you did, for, you did for a brief moment, but you came yeah. back. Great, great. <laughs> well, I'm just talking about, you know, watching one of my sons, like in his passion <laughs> on water and surfing and, and he's still a surfing dude. And now... His medicine is to share that with others. You know, his love of being on the water and to, you know, to sort of, you know, offering it now to other, um, to, to, to children who, who, you know, and sometimes children from difficult backgrounds. And, you know, I've just watched that going on all that time. I've got, I've got so many stories about my children. That's probably for another day. <laughs> yeah. But watching well, what their passion was. And I think, mm -hmm. and I think this to all parents now, it's like, See what the pa your passion is in your child. What are they most drawn to? And that way we become really good elders for the innocent beings that are coming into the world now. It's like, what are they most interested in? And trust that and let them grow with that, encourage that. Let them grow up with that. Never mind what the school system says. And okay, I might get knocked for that. But seriously, you know, there are children who are so much more creative than academic. Let's bring, encourage that because that's where they'll find their passion. You know, that's where they'll find what is theirs to do in the world. And, and you know, who are we to stop that? Who are we to stop the soul from really coming home into their bodies, you know, so they can live their purpose? You know, yeah. it's their contract with spirit, with God, with the universal energy, whatever you want to call it. And that's for them to do. That's theirs. And yeah. it's not for us to try and decide what, what, that being is whoever they are, however old they are. It's not up to us to, to, to control that. And, you know, I just think let the children grow up as they need to grow up. So, yeah. And that, I think that's going to be another show that we're going to do in the future <laughs> because I quite like that when you were saying <laughs> that. I was thinking, oh, yes, later on yes. this year, I think we might have you back on again if you want to come back on. We can actually talk about that. Absolutely. I'd love to. I mean, my, my sixth grandchild was born. Um, in December and you know the, and, and it's so amazing to have I've got three sons and three daughters and I've got three grandsons and three granddaughters I've oh, wow. got a lot of information that I can share about this you know this balance of the yin and the yang and and children growing up and yeah we make mistakes as parents I've made plenty of mistakes they don't always get it right but there are ways that we can you know, really support the soul's return into into each individual and, you know, just shine a light onto that subject and not make it so wacky or far out or mm. whatever. It's real stuff and it's very, very important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, de we're definitely, definitely, definitely going to do do that show. Um, we've got Rani who's been watching. Oh, yes. He says hi. Okay. Hi, Rani. Hello. Hi, Rani. Hello. Thank, thank you for... Uh, for, 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 for joining us um so as um you know i do guided meditation angel card readings um so each week i like to ask my guest would you like a mini guided meditation or an angel card for yourself and those watching so caroline what would you like oh an angel card please everyone always has angel I, cards. i've had i've had those little angel cards i don't know if they're the same ones but these little oblong angel cards i bought some of those about 30 years ago possibly even more than that and they are now all crumpled up and, and sort of in this little dish but they're so precious that it's almost like they're part of my own yeah, you know, my own skin almost and it's like oh yeah so inspiring go on give me an angel card <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm not using those cards so i'm using a different one um but uh corinda um, has shared this on their page oh thank you thank very you much very nice. thank you Thank you, thank you for sharing that. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm using I'm using different cards, and okay, so okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're cleansing, we're cleansing, bless them. Now, um, although I work with past life regression and I work with future life regression, I very much work in the present. 
Um, you know, for me, past life is you heal that past life so you're no longer worrying about it in the present, so it's no longer affecting you. And if you know your future, then you're not worried about it in the present. So everything I do is for the present. So when I do the cards, um, it's always for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Mm. So Thank what you. does Caroline and all those watching this live or the replay need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Caroline and all those watching this live? okay so the card that came out was great adventure take a risk and venture forward <laughs> which i think is absolutely perfect oh, fantastic that's so lovely that's really, really great for me. That that's like I do feel like I'm just on the beginning of an adventure. I'm about to move home. We signed the contract today um, for our new home, um, and and that feels like a whole new adventure because it's in a mm. place that I don't even I barely know. Um, the cards all came to fruition today. Um, my book is 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 going is I'm st I'm still writing, but that's. That's definitely got its sails blowing in the wind at the moment, and it's 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 riding those waves. Um, so life does feel like a big adventure right now. There's so much happening. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. It's, and you know, the card coming out, it's saying you know, go, you know, just go, go for it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's the same for everyone who's what who's watching this. You know, even if it's something small, go, go, for it. Take, take the risk. You know, the, the cards the the cards are saying you know. You can you can do it now. You can take that that risk on on that adventure, no matter how large or how small it actually it actually is for you. So I'm I'm really pleased that cards um, actually I actually today. But then that's the way angel cards work. They always come out, and quite often I don't even need to do the reading because people look at it and go, oh yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Makes sense, yeah, it really does make sense. So thank you, and I love that thing of you know taking a risk. Um, mm. and, and sort of the thing of checking in, you know, I, I, I'm, I am a bit of a risk taker, but I can't take a risk where I'm going to harm anybody else mm. or anybody else is going to suffer through that. And I think it's really good to take conscious risks, you know, and, and be aware, have a you know, state of mind that is focused and, and aware of what's going on around us. So, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm setting sail. Yeah, that's that. Little medicine is setting sail as well, and so happy that yeah, you know, she's really blossoming at the moment, and yes. uh, meeting a lot of people's yeah. hearts. Ah, oh, that 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 is absolutely brilliant. So, Caroline, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave for um, those that are watching this at all? Oh, I, I well, I suppose coming back to the title of this, we were talking about mm. you know the sort of the feminine. Um, we were talking about, you know, that that ambitious side, and 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 using ambition in a in a in a way that I I wouldn't necessarily use that word, but help. I, I understand why people would would relate to that. It's it's really about bringing your gifts in into the world and not to be shy of that, you know, and to acknowledge the yin part of you that possibly holds back, that falls into the shadows. Um, that gets a little bit lost sometimes, that needs to reconnect so that we can have a much stronger yin and yang balance in the world. Not that one is better than the other, not that feminine, femininity sorry, and masculinity, you know, we, we bring them mm. into balance. And, you know, it, it, we don't have to leave behind that feminine yin quality in, in, the, in the business world, um, in in the corporate world, in whatever it is, it's like bring more of that in, so that we we start to reclaim the balance a little bit more. So when you are feeling a bit shy of yourself and you feel you've got to adopt something other than who you really are, check in with that. Come back to the qualities that you know are more integral to yourself, more authentic to yourself, and let you know give them the the, the hand on the back that they need. Or a bit of the, the fire, or the juice that that they really need, because that there is a there is a, a a yin and a yang in all things, 
Mm. You know, there is a feminine and masculine in all things. It's like we don't have to shy away and try to be one or the other. So it's like bringing this all into balance. And, um, you know, I could say so much more about that, but. Yeah, like, no, what that. I'm with is, is like, yeah, on, honor every part of yourself rather than, you know, thinking it ha you have to be a certain way in order to get to that ambitious place in your life and to get your offering out there in that driving force. There are other ways. Um, and, you know, yeah, it yeah, does need a certain amount of drive, but you don't have to use that feminine yin quality in order to get there. Oh, that's, that's, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and that the words of wisdom Caroline has given you will help you further on your journey. So, Caroline, if people want to um, connect with you, how do they do that? Um, so I have a website, which is middleearthmedicine.com, all one word, middleearthmedicine.com. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram, Caroline Carey. Um, and I have a, an email address, alchemyinmovement at gmail.com. I'm happy for you to write to me if you want more information. Um, but any of those places, you can find me. Um, there's lots of information. There's a calendar on my website if you want events um uh yeah just just contact contact you can contact through the website or you can email me and either is fine on facebook yeah. messenger you know i'm quite easy to get in touch with <laughs> I can yeah available. <laughs> yeah um what i do is i'll uh, post all those details uh, um, in, a, in, in the comments section um afterwards so people can get to get hold of you so thank you so much for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video, which Corinda already has done. So thank you, Corinda. As I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life um, and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me so that we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute session via Skype or Messenger. To find out more about each other and how I can help you take charge of your destiny. And by the way, I will see you next Wednesday, the 22nd of May at 8 p.m., where my guest will be um, Kelly Roberts Carrington, who will be talking about embracing your sensitivity and how this can help the world have more heart. So I'll see you all then. And again, thank you so much for watching. And Caroline, again, thank you so much for being on the show. And I look forward when we when you come back later in the year. Thank you so much, Ray. It's been lovely to connect with you. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Brilliant. So bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.